let's go, Marcus, for uh, yes. for this amazing new album from uh, Blind Guardian. Uh, and NC told us last time that uh, the album is ready for a long time, and you yes. should have been uh, released this this album maybe one year ago, right? Uh, it was done a year ago. Uh, problem is, uh, in today's world, everything takes ages. So um, it's not like in the old days when you could deliver, uh, you know, the, the finished masters to your record company and they would have the, the CDs or vinyls or whatever ready in a couple of weeks. Now it takes forever, unfortunately, because the raw materials to produce physical units are lacking and you know there's huge waiting lines in front of the, the 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 factories that produce cds and vinyls and everything that's why it took so long uh on the other hand if we would have put out the album last year uh it would still have been in the middle of the pandemic yeah. so uh with no touring and no anything so uh, who knows it might have been better like this i don't know i mean oh. the, the pandemic is still going on but uh at least there are concerts happening in the moment so uh well yeah, we'll man. see what's gonna happen and today the best way to uh to promote an album is uh, only live you know so obviously yeah. the, an album without live it's uh like a throwing into a, it's, a it's it's a nightmare situation i know bands friends of ours who put out an album right at the beginning of the pandemic and it was fantastic albums and they couldn't do anything you know they couldn't play a single show they couldn't promote it and obviously it's a dead album no matter how good it is if you can't go on the road and promote it and play live for your fans it's it's a nightmare so we were kind of lucky uh when it comes to this because uh at least in the beginning of the pandemic, we didn't have any tours booked. I mean, obviously there is this uh, somewhere far beyond anniversary tour that was supposed to happen last year in September that we couldn't do. Then we moved it to this year, March, and again, we couldn't do it. And now it's it's planned for September this year and hopefully we'll be able to play it. But um, it's, I mean, every band on the planet has to deal with those things and it's it's a very difficult situation to be a musician but uh we'll have to face it i mean there's nothing we can do and it seems that there is some kind of light uh <laughs> this year at least uh, uh at least you know we we played two shows we played in spain last weekend and we played uh, the rock hard open air in germany the week before that so it's starting And uh, obviously, we hope that all the shows that we have booked for this year can happen. And oh, we just try to stay optimistic. You know, we're prepared. We rehearsed. Uh, I think we're playing a very nice set. And uh, judging the reactions of the people that have been to those two shows that we just played, they liked it. <laughs> so uh, we hope we can play all those shows. And we're definitely looking forward to that because, I mean, the last Blind Guardian tour ended in... When was it? 2017, I think, so long ago. And uh, it's about time to go on, on the road again, <laughs> and especially with a new album coming out. Of course. Did, did you play, by the way, did you play new songs uh, uh, on these two uh, shows? We, we already played new songs. I mean, obviously, we played Violent Shadows. Uh, that was the first new song that we played. We played that... Uh, in 2020 already when we did this Wacken worldwide live stream thing okay and we played uh, last year we played uh i think four shows altogether out of the 40 that were supposed to be played mm. uh but during those those five shows we uh we again played violent shadows and we played um deliver us from evil uh we couldn't play any new songs yet on those two sets that we just played over the last two weeks because um uh there was always a, a very strict curfew and uh we uh, just couldn't add any more songs but the plan is to play some new stuff yes and so yeah it's uh quite a surprise uh for blind guardians uh, blind guardian uh, musicians because uh This album is uh, straight to the point, 
quite in your face, quite brutal, even if, of course, there are a lot of melodies, but, uh, you know, when I listen to the, the first riffs, wow. <laughs> 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 yes. Uh... <laughs> Thank you for this. I agree. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, the funny thing is, um, the style, and obviously, it's still very melodic because melodies are a, an essential part of our music, always have been, always will be. But obviously, it's, it's a very fast, it's a pretty heavy and aggressive album. Um, the funny thing is, um, at least in my opinion, um, on pretty much any album that we put out in our career, there is stuff like this, but oh. sometimes it got overshadowed by, you know, more complex orchestral stuff. And uh, this album is not orchestral. So this is, as you mentioned, it's more stripped down, um, even though we still use tons of tracks as we always do. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's, um, there's a lot of really fast stuff on there. I think there's the fastest songs uh, that we ever did actually are on those albums or is on this album. Obviously, there's other stuff as well, because, uh, you know, uh, if if it would just be nine or ten straight speed metal, thrash, whatever songs, um, there wouldn't be any dynamics and uh, it would be boring easily. Plus, fast songs, uh, you know, the effect of a fast song is much stronger if it follows a slower song or if a slower song follows that. So you have all those dynamic differences. It was just a, a hell of a ride for us to do this album. And I think um, part of the reason why it happened is uh, that we finally managed to put the orchestral album behind us after 20 something years. <laughs> well, you so saw that, that, yeah, you said that gave us a kind of Sure. Yeah, yeah, you know, that gave us a kind of closure because, you know, uh, how much more orchestral do you want to be after a pure orchestral album, you know, so that kind of was enough for now. <laughs> and uh, maybe that that opened our view more for the for the heavier, faster, more aggressive side as well again. But, you know, there, there are some kind of... Uh, so kind of elements of uh, orchestra, you know? And mm -hmm. sometimes we can visualize with an, uh, a real orchestra. So it could fit with an orchestra also. It could, I mean, obviously, I mean, it, it's, our part, it's our way of songwriting, you know? I mean, that orchestral stuff has been one of the key elements of our sound for quite some years now, I mean, Actually, the first time we tried something like this was on Somewhere Far Beyond, like 30 years ago with uh, Theater of Pain. Obviously, that was a very basic version, but that's where we first played around with orchestral elements. And then A Dark Passage on, on Nightfall. And then obviously, uh, and then There Was Silence was a huge step for us. But um, an orchestra would work on, on some of those new songs. Uh, we just didn't see the need to add one because, you know, we, as I was saying, we had that on the orchestral album. So uh, we wanted to do something different. And there are a lot of, uh, uh, for your part, uh, uh, a lot of uh, guitar sounds, uh, tons of solos, which is yes. uh, amazing. Always. <laughs> Always. <laughs> you, know, it's, Always. Uh, you know, that's... That's that's all part of, of of the Blind Guardian sound, you know, all the the guitar layers, the all the melody lines and the guitars, all the choirs and the vocals. That's all key elements, and they belong to us, I think. And whether it's in 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 a very fast, aggressive song like some of the stuff on this album, or whether it's in 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 something uh, like whatever Nightfall, for example, or the Bard song, or wherever. You know, that's what our sound is like. So those are elements that will always be there. How did you work in studio uh, on um, with Charlie at the Twilight Old Studios? Uh, it was the the production took place within about one year. I think we started in March 20, finished in March 21, around that time. 
Um, it was produced by Charlie and us. Charlie engineered the stuff, plus our second engineer, Tommy Geiger, uh, engineered a lot of stuff. And um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's very comfortable for us to work in our own studio because obviously uh, we know this place inside out. We don't have to rent it. And, you know, there's no no uh, time schedule. There's no clock ticking that some other band will come and you have to be done at whatever point, which is nice. Yeah. Obviously, uh, it can be a curse as well because you drag things forever because you have the time. <laughs> But, uh, you know, our, our attitude has always been like, we take all the time that we need until we feel that the product is done the way we wanted it to be done. And um, this time it took about a year. Um, for the first time in quite some years, Charlie did not do the mix. Uh, the mix was done by Joost van den Broek in his uh, Sandlane studios in the Netherlands. And uh, we were super happy with the result. I mean, we, that's something that we wanted to try, uh, have somebody else mix it. Uh, we also, for the first time in I don't know how many years, uh, we actually rehearsed many of the songs before we started recording them, which is something that obviously we did in the early days because that's when we were still writing in the, in the rehearsal room and obviously you were jamming on the songs. But that's something that we didn't, didn't do in years. And we always... When we finished the production, we said, oh, we should have rehearsed them. Maybe the feel or the interpretation of certain parts would have grown even better because that sometimes happens on the road. Mm -hmm. And finally, since we couldn't tour anyway uh, due to the pandemic, we had the time to really just go into the rehearsal room, jam all those songs and see uh, if we can still improve them or if changing our parts helps or whatever. And uh, it was a really nice experience. I hope we can do that next time again without the pandemic blocking us. <laughs> but uh, as I was saying, we are super happy with the results. I think to me, uh, it's the best sounding album we had in years. Uh, it really fits the songs. The, so the sound is very powerful, very strong. So uh, we're really happy. It's right. When you listen to, to the album, uh, I think there are nine, uh, nine or ten nine songs. songs. Nine songs. Nine songs. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you finish the album. It's oh, it's already done. Yeah. Go yeah, on. it is. Let's go for another <laughs> listen. Jim. Yeah, but that's a good thing, right? I mean, uh, you know, it's not that you feel like oh, another song. Where you go, <laughs> when will <laughs> it end? You know, it's <laughs> like hey, that's it. Let's do it again. So that's something positive, I guess. Yeah, of course. What well, What's your What are you the the most proud of? On, on this album? Oh, that's difficult to say because it's still too fresh. You know, something like this normally uh, settles in after you start touring and play more of those songs. Um, I have to say, I really like American Gods uh, because I just love the chorus of this song. And, well, I love the whole song. But uh, also Damnation is one of my my favorite songs uh but as i was saying ask me this in in one week and most likely you'll get a different answer because that constantly changes it's the same thing when somebody asks me what's your favorite blind guardian song ever i have no clue it changes all the time <laughs> and especially when when it's a new album it's really difficult to say something like this because you know it it, it still has to settle in okay uh but uh i feel that the Uh, the the um, the NC vocals are really really powerful, uh, really melodic also, and tons of uh, backing vocals. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems that he, he he took his time to to record and to digest the ideas of recording uh, new songs. Definitely. I mean, a production over one year is not a short production. So we took the time that we needed. Uh, but, you know, as I was saying before, we uh, uh, we don't like compromising, especially when it comes to something like this. You know, we want the album to be exactly how we imagined it to be. So if something like this takes time, we'll take that time. You know, it's, it's we don't want to rush things and then put out an album and later on think, oh, we could have done it better if we had more time no we take that time until everybody says yeah that's exactly how it should be and uh 
at least for now, I would say we managed to reach that goal. Uh, you, you were talking about, um, uh, of course, the, the, the album, The God Machine. And uh, so it seems that the, the, the topics and the lyrics uh, are all on the religion topic, right? And no, no, it's not. It's not all religion. It's it's different kind of things. And, and you know, I I uh, asked Hansi for a little cue sheet because yeah, I don't know wonderful. all the information about that. What inspired him? You know, there is stuff that is uh, based on on books like "Deliver Us from Evil" is based on the Crucible by Arthur Miller, for example, and um, "Blood of the Elves" is uh, based on on uh, the books about the Witcher. Um, Damnation is uh, about Patrick Rothfuss uh, King, Kill King Killer Chronicles books, yeah. which are among my favorite fantasy books ever. Uh, Violent Shadows is about the Stormlight Archives by uh, Brendan Sanderson, my other favorite fantasy books. <laughs> so um, literature has always been a, a, a big influence on the lyrics, but... Um, Uh, Let It Be No More, for example, was influenced by the dying of Hansi's mother. So a uh, sad story ended up in a song, just like Ashes to Ashes was uh, inspired by the death of his father all those years ago. So uh, religion sometimes uh, plays a role in a couple of songs. But uh, I would say the, the main inspiration is, uh, is from, from books, from literature. From fantasy. Yeah. Most of the times. Yeah, when you are on tour, it could be hard to, yes. to read. No, it, it's it's something I do a lot. I mean, um, uh, uh, reading, especially when 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 ebook readers came around, that uh, makes reading on the road much easier because back in the day when you try to carry big books with you that just add weight to your luggage and they get wasted on the road uh, you know an ebook reader is something very very nice you have i don't know on my kobo there are about a thousand books now so um there's always something to read and uh, especially on the road there's so much time that you have to kill because yeah you know you're busy for two hours on stage and the rest of the time 22 hours is waiting for something to happen <laughs> so there's that. tons of time to read and sometimes it's a tragedy you know when uh, when i see um i've heard so many musicians you know um uh, uh, because of alcohol and drugs such a tragedy you know and so so many artists you know and so yeah it's uh is it hard to to fight against that uh not really i mean i have never taken any drugs in my life i do drink alcohol so if that counts as a drug then yes that's the drug that i'm taking um but uh i'm somebody that enjoys a glass of of a fine whiskey yeah and for me it's it's about drinking something that i like the taste it's not about getting drunk so that's not really a danger or a risk for me i know uh some people struggle with this none in our band so we never had this problem uh but yeah i mean if if you're if you're spending so much time on the road and uh, especially for example if you're doing a us tour uh, where it takes like 24 hours just to get from a to b and you're sitting on the on the bus all that time uh and there is booze around on the table, that can be a trap. But, you know, we're all aware that this is not a good idea, just getting yeah. wasted all the time, especially, I mean, you know, uh, people pay to see a good show and then they deserve to see a good show. And if I go on stage wasted, uh, the show won't be good. So... <laughs> sure. Uh, by the way, you were talking about live. Uh, so when will you play live? Uh in September, right? <laughs> But there's tons of festival all over Europe uh, throughout the summer. Then in uh, September, uh, we uh, plan to finally do the, the Somewhere Far Beyond anniversary tour that was, as I was saying, supposed to happen last year and then earlier this year. But due to the pandemic, we, we had to move it. And after that, there will be a few more festivals until the end of the year and um 
hopefully all this will work and then hopefully next year we can do a regular or we can start a regular world tour for the new album and i'm saying starting because normally if we do a world tour it's like two two and a half years on the road so hopefully we can do that <laughs>